so hello everybody welcome back to another episode of the rad movement on youtube uh today i bring you someone specific and special uh this is my man brett hessem owner of hessem's inc uh the artist behind hessem the artist <laughs> um, oh, yeah. uh, and uh just an overall amazing dude that we met on the road it, uh and um, his story is fucking inspiring. So you know, it, man. nice to meet y'all. Uh, kind of want to just share uh, who the fuck you are, what you've been through. Okay. Um, okay. My name know. is Brett Hessem. I go by Hessem, a Virginia native. Um, you know, what I, mean? so I was born and raised in Virginia. Ain't really been out of it, but too much, a little bit. Florida's one of the places I've been here now that I like. You know what I mean? Um, uh, let me see. Where would I start? I guess. I guess. You know what I mean? I come from. I guess we were better, like, kind of like a broken home kind of situation. Younger, I was left to the streets while mother was on drugs, kind of is still to this day. So didn't really have a father, don't know his name, anything like that. So came up kind of like an animal mindset, really, in a, like, raised out from like a kill or be killed kind of mindset, which led me as a younger adult into getting myself into situations with drugs and ended up getting myself incarcerated. Um, you know, I try not to talk too much about it, but... uh I did five years for selling drugs, and then I did three years, I got out, and I had kind of had my life on the right track, and started having children, and then I ended up making another mistake, but I did another three-piece, and after, you know, I guess through the, the time of incarceration, I was able to, I guess, thank God, to change the direction of my life, you know what I'm saying? Um, that helped me out a lot, uh, I got a lot of positivity in my life now. Kind of like structures, things that, you know, I probably don't think I would ever had if I didn't take the time to, like, self-reflect. Um, my mother still pops up to this day and sleeps on my couch. It's kind of like, I look at her as my motivation. Like, damn, I'm glad it turned out like that type shit. You know what I'm saying? Look yeah. in the mirror and see, like, a stronger person. I used to be addicted to drugs really bad. Like, I was 130 pounds. And trust me, that did not look good. Um, when they, like I told you, when they locked me up, they saved my life, you know what I'm saying? I was doing an ounce of crack a day or more. I was selling drugs to support the habit. So it was like kind of robbing Peter to pay Paul, you know, in a, in a sense, you know what I'm saying? And so like, like, where was you living in this? Uh, Fairfax and then in Harrisonburg, Virginia. You know but, what like, I mean? but like, what kind of situation did you find yourself living in? Did you have like... Well, sometimes it would be... Well, it like so, sometimes surfing? it would be with my mother and that would be in some like shit that she had ended us up in and she would live like one spot for six months and end up getting evicted from not paying her bills type shit. So we would be in like those like low income apartment like places and shit and be there like so I was skipped around from school districts a lot and like all of that just I didn't understand it back then but now I understand like she couldn't pay her bills and after you don't pay your bills at the consistency of amount of time she, you know, so she would always try her best you know what I'm saying but drugs would always pretty much like hinder her in a lot of different ways so then sometimes she would disappear for long periods of times and then my grandmother you know what I'm saying God bless her so she, she would take care of me sometimes when like she would just go on bingers and disappear for like six seven months you know what I'm saying and it would fuck me up as a kid a little sometimes because I, I wonder like you know where's she at why isn't she coming back and I'd be like waiting for it like anticipating it was kind of like messed me up with women in a sense and like trust and trust issues you know what I'm saying all sense. the way down to like my grandmother would buy me some things sometimes where my mom would pop up and then like take them like a game system or something like that and they go return it or something and, I, and tell me somebody stole it you know what I'm saying and like just you know crazy stuff that she was battling her demons going through you know what I'm saying so life was I'd say honestly confusing as, as, as a kid because like everything I wanted I had to go get on my own so then I started doing negative shit to achieve the shit you know what I'm saying other than you know my grandmother you know, she would make sure I had clothes and she would make sure I had what I needed to get by so you know and she would come help you know she loved she loved my mother a lot but at the same time, I was like, I would see the kids with the things I wanted, and then I would start doing negative shit to achieve it. You know what I'm saying? And like it was that that driven mindset is probably what landed me in the penitentiary at the age of 18. You know what I mean? Like fresh as soon as I can go, you know, my head way headed. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but uh, that time I'm thankful for really because uh, you know I learned a lot about myself throughout it. I learned a lot of discipline. It took the animal instincts out and replaced them with intelligence. You know what I'm saying? I gained some gifts that, you know, I started getting the art really heavy, you know, writing really heavy, you know, a lot of things that I'm successful at today actually came from the time of choosing to be constructive in there instead of like being negative. It's like I'm stuck in it, I'm stuck. So I gotta make the best at a time that I'm stuck with type shit. So I developed, you know, talents that I live off of today, which is really nice, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that most of the younger adulthood was spent in Fairfax, Virginia, down in Northern Virginia, which is more of a high pace. 
And then as I became an adult and they sent me, the country would send me to prison, you know what I'm saying? Moved up to the country with the mindset of the city where I would sell you drugs, I'll never see you again. But in the country, I'll sell you drugs and you come back as a repeat process. So I ended up getting off with where I wire on me, like I told you the story, you know, really fast because like my mindset was move, 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 move. And that didn't work up in the country, you know what I'm saying? So that ended me in the, in the penitentiary at a young age already off gate, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just because yeah. like the, the way I was moving was not meant for, for where I was at, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't understand that then. I understand that now, you know what I mean? But I'm not thankful for it because I, I, if I would ever retrieve like some great level of like selling drugs, I probably went to jail for the rest of my life. So it's like fucking, you know, that was a blessing in some just to get the little couple year tag and not have to fucking, some people that start whole fucking life on this shit, you know what I'm saying? So man, I look at that as a blessing in a sense because I could have took that major L, like, you know what I mean? That some people take yeah, and yeah. they don't get to come home, you know what I'm saying? So, well, you know, you were saying like, you know, some dudes are like, it was my third bid and I'm 40. And like, yeah, that's what I changed me. That. Yeah, I was, I was saying, well, I was already on my third bid and this dude was older than me and it's like proud of it. So I was like, man, you know, I'm in my young 20s already. So it's like, I've already given up my whole 20s almost to being incarcerated. And like, I didn't realize then how like valuable time is. Like that eight years I lost through incarceration, I'm behind in life that. Like in these moments when I was learning, I didn't realize like that because if you take the time that what I've achieved and the time that I've been out, like the moment I left drugs alone and like what made the, 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 my mind, I'm not going to do illegal stuff no more. I'm not going to get myself locked up. This is not never going to happen again. You know what I mean? I started achieving like crazy success. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then it's like my mind hyper focuses on everything and that I never think about drugs, period. I never think about negative things. And then as I'm achieving, it's giving me more motivation to keep achieving and it just doesn't stop. And the, the fact that it was able to taste that, I can I can live a comfortable life without selling drugs, without like what I thought I had to do as a boy, especially when I get out of prison, I had no job, I couldn't get a job. Nobody wanted to hire me because I was a felon. They had to work at a restaurant, I got child support. So by the time I get this little $360 paycheck at the end of the week, child support yanks half of that. I can't even pay a rent, I can't pay nothing, you know what I'm saying? It's making you feel bad as a man because like, you can't provide for yourself, so then your brain all the it's, it's life on the stalling plan. You're setting you up for failure. You know what I'm saying? You're, you're nobody will give you a chance or nothing the way you automatically go back to, to the normality. I know I can survive this way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So then that that I, it was hard to to do that for you. I would do construction during the summer, and then when it would get cold in Virginia, the construction dies down, and then I would cook in kitchens. It was always harder, in the, in the, you know what I'm saying, in the kitchen because I didn't get paid as much money. Everything slowed down. Child support don't stop. Bills don't stop. You know what I'm saying? All that type of good stuff. So that's why I'd say like tattooing changed my life when I was able to like transition over, leave drugs alone, actually believe in myself and focus and pursue something to like create something out of myself other than just trying to like fucking work for shit in jobs or just whatever I can get. Right, Man, right. it's like, you know what I mean? And I would never do anything that stuff now, you know what I'm saying? But like, yeah, because I have a good life and comfortability, a good team, I've built structure, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, it was definitely a... a I, I, I look at it all the time, I'm blessed, you know, because I'm like one of those, uh, could have been a statistic. Right. Like with everything, right. I could have yeah. just kept with the rep the repetitors and have nothing and just still be sitting in prison like my kids wouldn't have shit type shit, you know what I'm saying? I could have been like, you know what I mean? If I would just kept letting my environment surround me, it was up to me, I had to make just the changes. I used to hear this shit and I would think it was so corny. They would say, you got to change your people, places, and things. And I would think that, you know what I mean? Whatever, you know what I mean? Change off the people fuck with me, you know what I mean? Right, right. You know what I mean? right. 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 But then, uh, yo, when I did that, my whole life changed. Absolutely. It was so crazy. And to reflect back on that, when people would tell me that, and my, and my brain would would register it off as, like, negative. Like, you know what I'm saying? Whatever, I'm not a fucking pussy, man. Whatever, I can do shit, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. But once I learned, like, yo, it, it's so, so valuable to just learn to slow your brain down and just let the shit process and sit in and down. And then so many lessons I learned and didn't realize I learned until I, my brain elevated enough to view back on those moments and be like, wow. I really wish I would have caught this sooner, you know what I'm saying? Dude, I had a moment like that when I was on Ink Master. So I read this book called The New Earth by Eckhart Tolle. Okay. And then um I I read no, wait, was man, it was a fucking sequel to one of these books that I was reading. I, no. Um It's good you do the, a lot of reading. <laughs> I do a lot of reading. I was it was the um this one book that had the nine insights in it. I, I I'll figure it out and I'll share it in the comments or something. Nice, nice. But uh, so the book was the tenth insight. Now the first nine insights was about like self discovery, okay. in one book. The tenth insight was the next book, and I read this book, and it had this. Well, I listened to it on Audible while I was an Ink Master. Okay. 
in my selfish state, I think, Master, right? I need okay. it for me. I didn't need it for others. It was explaining about like how like the, the consciousness of the whole world is going to be what heals the whole world, right? Okay. And I was like, fuck this book. I need to heal me. Fuck the yeah, whole world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And so it wasn't until years later that I... Oh. With the concepts, yeah. yeah no the doubt. concepts set in so yeah. many years later. Glad I read it. Glad I put that confusion on the table then. But then it didn't serve me yeah. the way I wanted it to. brain kind of stored it, but just didn't like catch the meaning of the concepts. So it's and, really good you pretend it. Right. And, and the same, same as what you're talking about, like holding on to like... These lessons you don't fucking understand, but yeah. years later, like, duh. damn, I wish I'd have caught that then. Right. All the way down to like when I was younger, I remember old folks would be like, "Boy, that's not music. This is music." You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and then now I think that, and I said it, and I've been like, "Oh shit!" And you're the same. There, and I was the same little hard-headed fucker. Yeah, man, you know what I'm talking about? I mean, but like, I, the, the, the recollections later, like, damn. So like, yo. If I could say anything to the you, pay attention, bro, because there'd be a lot of lessons we could catch, and we just do just pay attention and hyper focus on what we're doing and having fun. Right. We don't, and like to save you a lot of time, like absolutely, because you know I mean? the, the curriculum that we're given is not taught to make you a better human. It's taught to make you a slave to society. And it's so messed up. Like it doesn't they don't teach you about taxes. They don't teach you about none of the stuff that matters. You know, what they what teach you about stuff? self. Yeah, they don't you teach do. you about. They, they should teach you about credit when you're in middle school. And, and that shit should be pumped should, in your dome all the way through beginning. high school. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Where we have successful humans. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, yeah, I'm just, I don't know. I'm well, glad my boy helps me out with, the, with that. Helped me get focused on taxes. I know it's a little, and on all the, and on the, like, you know, all that stuff. Oh, when I was older, I'm behind, I feel like. You know what I mean? But I, like, took an understanding of it. I felt like that a lot. Um, you know, and I, I don't I don't really feel like it's real. I think we just tell ourselves. Oh, yeah, facts. You facts. Know, we do hold yeah. ourselves back with a lot of handicaps, middle yeah, handicaps. Yeah, you talk about this a lot. Go. Yeah, yeah. And I we see it all the time. Up, and we're so afraid of what we could be. Yeah, the change or the chance or the you know, just taking the risk. You know what I'm saying? The, the fear of success yeah. is something that's so much bigger than the fear of failure, but we put the fear of failure first because it's easier to achieve. Yeah, one hundred percent. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And it's easy to say, oh, I didn't get it, it didn't make it, whatever. I can go to the Blame to keep excuses, yeah. blah blah blah. And you know, you, you said something about uh, to the youth of America, but I wanna speak to the senior uh, population. You facts, know, facts. The people that are not the youth. Grow the fuck up. One hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? You're grown ups, grow the fuck up. We're grown ups. Yeah. We're supposed to grow the fuck up. Learn to deal with life on life's terms. And we learn to deal with our kids. Yeah. And and life as it comes and fucking evolve yeah. and give love and understanding and grace and compassion. The grace, compassion, love and understanding that we don't give ourselves, we need to give our kids. We need to give the future generations. Yeah. Gotta lead by example. And we have to learn with them and we have to grow with them. Yeah. One of my favorite things about my twenty one year old son Jaden that you you made music with you, yeah, you know awesome him. Cat. He's awesome a good cat. Yeah, and really. like we learn things at the same time, even though we're twenty years apart. Yeah, hell yeah. It's cause you got an open mind, bro. You're gonna keep fucking evolving. Exactly. You know I mean? That's a good thing. And our relationship stays stable, healthy, happy, comfortable, and uncomfortable. And we grow together yeah. as a unit, as a family unit. If you don't let your children be heard and loved and yeah. felt you gotta inspire them as much as listen to them. And, listen and, to yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, that matters 100%. 100%. Because everybody's got a voice, and if it ain't heard, it starts to discourage people. And we're the first Absolutely. one that our children uh, want to be, like, they, they, want, they want our approval. Yes. They want our approval. You know They're looking saying? for our stamp. Yeah, so yeah you, got, you definitely got to give them, like, Yo, yeah. you can conquer the world, bro. No, no question. Right. You know Dude, uh, one of the, the new songs off of Jaden's EP, uh, Ever Since the Youth, my dad told me I was special. Yeah, Yo. hey, that's the truth though. But yeah, hey, y'all gotta check that out. Don't miss that. I'm trying real. to tell you the kick out raw talent. Absolutely, JTL Jado. But check it out. You are not Ooh. gonna be mad. One hundred percent. You're gonna love it on all platforms. Yeah, um, everywhere. He, he's been finding himself, and it's been awesome. Yeah. Uh, the new the new EP is Please Stand By. Yeah, um, I love the name. Please stand yeah, Please Stand, stand By. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, because as an artist, right, we're afraid of letting our art out. 
So he's been holding people and off for so long. And stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> to me, it sounds like the name of a famous album. I love it. Like, it right. so plain, but put out, you know what I'm saying? And it, and it connects. That's it hard connects. to do. I overthink some of my releases a lot. Like, what's that name out? So it take forever. What's this? You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's like, yeah, that's a hard part to come up with. Right. <laughs> and, you know, like, yeah. I want to say that living here in, our, in, 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 in the house with me, and we were constantly sharpening each other. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. like. It keeps the brain working. Right. It's in so, and it's like, dude, stop fucking overthinking it. So yeah. like, I think I think he kind of started to work, and like, you know, he, he went for, through a breakup, and then you know moved from Indiana to here. So yeah, life has been weird, yeah. you know. So when, when he came here, you know, you know, we're sharing this studio space, nice. you know, and like, he's he's learning to grow as as a, as an artist and as a business. Nice. I'm learning to grow as a business and as a mentor, a coach. Uh, you know, yeah, he's your father. Legacy, so that's right. Nice. And we're learning at the same time. Right. And like, it's cool that I'm growing and he's growing because my legacy is learning right. to grow. Yeah. Uh, you 100%. know, and I'm not afraid to show him. That. Yeah, yeah. So, you're it, teaching him life lessons at the same time right. you're gaining life lessons. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. Ain't nothing wrong with that at all. That's, that's positivity all the way around. Absolutely. And I was afraid to have another kid with a 21 year old already. Uh -huh. I felt like I should have been done parenting young kids. You're starting over. Yeah. But it's, yeah, right? Because you have a 10 year old yeah. and like no, a. One and a half year old. Yeah. yeah. So, like. Yeah. But, like, it's so beautiful having that gap because you well, get to raise this kid yeah. while you're raising this kid. And, and they help. Like, the same. They help. Like, yeah. They get to be a. Like, do you get a big brother in a year Ooh. apart? Or did you get a big brother in a gap like that? He's always going to look up. He's always going to be able to give him good advice. Like, He's just going to be that much more solid of a human with his, like, his support system. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Whereas, like, kids leading kids sometimes can, you know, having fun, it can lead it wherever. You know what I mean? So, right. the guidance in that level is going to be right. sick. That's why I hope for my 10 year old and my one and a half year old that, like, he's going to, like, learn a lot from him in that aspect because yeah. the gap is like, and he's really compassionate with him and patient with him to be the fact that it's a baby. You know, sometimes younger kids just don't have the patience for it. So, it's nice to see that. He like overly wants to be a big brother right you know what i'm saying so that's already like the kid you know the baby just smiles all the time so it's, you can't we can't you know what i mean i'm Dude, lucky blessed you know what I'm saying? baby smiles are fun. but the Ooh. love they give you is, is priceless it's a, it's an unconditional pure love that like they're not doubting you nothing like the the like that you can only have that feeling if you feel it like i could tell somebody a million times you kind of just got to experience it you know what i'm saying my Jaden, like he's twenty one years old, and I don't remember the smiles feeling this way. You know, yeah, what I'm saying? it was thing. a long time yeah, ago. Too. I don't know if it's because so, I've grown as a person or what it is. I, I feel the same way from transition to transition. Was I not soft enough back then to feel it? You too. know what I'm like, saying? Yeah, like, was yeah. I trying to be so tough? Oh, definitely. I, yeah, you yeah, know that, that I that I couldn't that I couldn't be that vulnerable yeah. to melt for yeah, that kid. Yeah, one hundred percent. Because, dude. You, I'm sure you've witnessed it in the past week being here. That kid melts me, yeah, dude. I, you know, I yeah. hold him and like a good look father. At I told him all day that man. I was like, yo, he's a good, he's a good father. You know what I'm saying? I was like, that's why I've been in his house a lot instead of like going out. You know what I'm saying? Because they got right. a baby, he's young, they're taking care of him. So I knew I can do on that. You know what I'm saying? Thanks, man. I appreciate yeah. it, dude. And that's you know, good. like you know, that's one of the things as you get older and as you become a father. If you if you if you your friends and your 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 associates and your business partners aren't good parents. How can you be? Yeah, we need with to. Them. Uh, yeah, you you're know not relating saying? to them at that point. It's not type two people you're around because you know, can't grow right. with that. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I love to tear the club up. Don't get yeah, me wrong. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. But I know it's going to cost me another day or two afterwards. One hundred percent. That's have, why I don't like doing it. Yeah. You know, like my I body's going to not like. Yeah, it. dude. You yeah. know, I have a family that that needs me, but at the same time, I need them. Yeah. Thanks. You know, we've talked about it a lot. Yeah. How, like, you know, if I wake up in the morning with my mind racing, and then Zen is stressy donald puts him in my arms and like we're out yeah, we're yeah. both out because yeah. we're both like finding a way to match that peaceful energy yeah. we're both searching and that's going to keep happening mine's one and a half and it still does stuff like that it's going right. to keep happening so y'all's yeah. bond is just going to get like Strong. deeper there yeah. and he could calm you down when nobody else can you know what i'm saying the purity you know what i mean if 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 my energy isn't too hard where he can't handle it he will always take me down yeah, oh yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's that's if my stress isn't Yeah, yeah, because he'll sense that at that point, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah dude. And, and like we try to work through that. Yeah, you know, yeah. like it's like we're that's talking about being a parent. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's so like we're only human. I say this shit all the time, like everybody's nobody's perfect. So eventually you're gonna get yeah. stressed out and then it just what gratifies human from human is how we accept that and work through it. 
Right. You know what I'm saying? Like some people don't have the availability and I feel for them because there was a time that my brain would overload so much that I would just lash out with aggression and I couldn't process the emotion or the feeling. So I'd become this fucking ballistic maniac. Then I go, fuck, whose feelings I hurt? It's, it's whatever, we can do whatever. Like this animal mindset shit. And like, I couldn't, I had no emotion. I couldn't feel for nothing. And my mom would always be like, Pressure change and I didn't understand what she was saying. I was like, what? I thought like I was like, what are you talking about? But then like when you don't oh, understand yeah, what they're saying. Throughout having children and growing and getting past that and like like, you know, I, I used to like I was watch movies and people would cry. And I was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like I don't understand. This doesn't happen to me. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't, I don't understand this emotion. And then now I see a movie that about fuck me up. I see tearing up and everything. Like so as it was like I was, able, I was able, I feel now, you know, I was able to gain emotion from an animal mindset where I was like, always like, kill or be killed. Like I had, to, I was like, I had to think like that all the time. So it left me with like, I guess you call it like resting bitch face or something. Like I didn't smile. Like I'm always serious. I want, want to you know, deal with a man with aggression because so I was like, what? You know what I'm saying? It was like, I always had this fucked up mindset. You know what I'm saying? But, like just trauma yeah, response. Yeah, having children though yeah. and like developing that love and like this understanding and then, and, and, and developing and coming as a human taught me compassion and like reverse that shit. It's like a switch that finally got switched off. It's like I finally feel emotion again type shit. Like it made me like better as a human, but I, but there was a period in my life where I was like a wild fucking animal. Like I wasn't loved much. So I didn't understand how to project it or how to accept it. When I would get it, I would think of it as a negative thing and I wouldn't accept it. And I didn't know how to project it because I had never felt it. But then I had a woman that like rode out with me. I'm, I, you know what I'm saying? I have two kids with her. She, uh, she, I mean, I heard her heart. She showed me, she stuck with me through it. She taught me real compassion and love, mm -hmm. which, you know what I'm saying, opened my mind and really, like, helped me, like, catch a concept of, like, you know, how to love, I guess, in a sense. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've always been a loyal, love, love, yeah. yeah, I've always been a loyal person to a cause. Like, but she taught you something new. You know what I'm saying? Like, because, you know, I'm, and I stand on principles and I'm good, but, but I didn't know, like, I don't know how to care about what you thought or like anything like that, or you know what I'm saying, how to be compassionate to anything, human life, period. You know what I'm saying? It's had this fucked up mindset. But you know, dude, I don't know, just like it changed me. Like now I'm not like that no more. I'm not the same person. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not, you know, I don't know what it was. It was the leaving drugs alone. If it was having, I mean, I'm pretty sure it's a combination of a lot. Of different oh, things. Yeah. You know oh, what I'm saying? Every, it, Taking yourself out of the environment, not thinking about that no more. Like my tattoo business is successful as hell. I've owned one for going on seven years. I got the biggest one in my area. Like people I have a good swat, solid ass I mean, team. You got 13, you know what I'm saying? Like a solid ass yeah. team. Everybody gets along. Great, great people. I've just truly been blessed. And, and that all just came out of like, being I like I got done wrong so many times and I just didn't didn't precipitate that energy into other people I just wrote them people off and kept like focusing on like I'm I'm not gonna let that change me like I just I was able to gain that mindset and I just kept like the positivity and the consistency just got me like greatness you know what I'm saying like I just didn't let it stop you know what I'm saying like I, did, I could have become a douchebag not trusting nobody stop trying to grow a team stop trying to like you know what I'm saying because I went through like 12 or 13 people before I even got to the stage where I'm at now you know, like you know what I'm saying through a bunch of different just random scenario type shits and like so there's points where I would like be there by myself like fuck I don't know how to do this and, like this is crazy you know what I'm saying blah, blah, blah. and I was just like just keep being positive, bro. God gave me everything, right When I need it, just being truly blessed. You know what I'm saying? There's a time when I felt like I was blocking all my blessings because I was hyper focused on shit that meant nothing. And I was trying to make like something out of nothing with pure negativity. You know what I'm saying? And all, all you're doing, you're doing negatives, get negative. So my outcome was never positive. If you, if you, if you perpetuate a fight, you're going to end up in a fight. Yeah, yeah, it just stays there. And misery yeah, yeah. just enjoys company. You're just going to live in that boat. You know what I'm saying? Just the like when you're. Thing, yeah. If, yeah, if you take up your life as a car, when you get on hardcore drugs, it's like you drop that bitch in neutral. Five, six years of hardcore drugs now what's your car do when it sits outside and starts to print its value like the paint job you look all yeah, fucked up yeah, you know? you're all messed yeah. up and everything like so it's like and then this happens so long that when you finally try to catch up you're playing so much catch up you just don't see the possibility of i went through all these chances like these phases where it's like i can't get out of fucking so far behind i'll never get out of this world. but like i owe ten thousand dollars in child support all this other shit i paid it all off got it all gone everything but it was like I had to just like, no, you could, this can't be done type shit and just go, 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 go. But like just the weight of it would always be like, wait, like, man, I can't do this. I would always have all these like mental blocks until I just learned that like persistency will, will break anything. Like you every day do it, you'll be successful. At it. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, if you go, if you build it, they will come. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, oh, well, absolutely. Yeah, 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 that's for real. That's it. That dude was a smart fucker. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's the truth. But dude, it, it's funny because what comes up for me when you say that, um, 
I remember two specific moments in my life that are vastly uh, on extreme points. One was when I was in the hospital bed with a broken leg. Not sure if I'm going to be able to keep my leg months later. It's definitely not easy. It's a weird one, yeah. right? Um, but I felt in that moment, this feels just as shitty as it felt before I broke my leg when I was in a bad mental state. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, because you're going, okay. yeah, uh-huh. So, so follow me. That. So now I'm in a hospital bed, and that feels just as shitty with, as, as a dude with two legs feeling sorry for himself. Uh-huh, it makes perfect sense. All right, so now the other day, um, just out of nowhere, I was thinking, wow, here I am, and life feels the same, but my energy feels different. Years after, being feeling sorry for myself because I had two legs. Yeah. Feeling sorry for myself when I wasn't sure if I was going to not have a leg. And now I'm just fucking living life on the other side of it. Uh-huh. Like, feeling that neutral state of just, like, not knowing how the fuck it's going to be. Yeah, yeah, make it through it. And, like, it all feels the same, but the emotions are different. Uh, I get, yeah, I get exactly what you're saying. Like, the whole ride is going through the same problem, but you went through different emotional peaks throughout it. You because you're driving yeah. the same car yeah. through all of it. 100%. So it feels the same as sitting in the driver's you're feeling seat. feeling all the bumps. Yeah. yeah. So no matter what's going on, you're still in the driver's seat of that car. Thanks. Whether it's... Being a gazillionaire or fucking becoming a quadriplegic. Yeah, you're still right. You're still yeah. in this meat suit. You That's your car. Yeah. yeah. So no matter what, you all feel the same as you're going through different emotional levels. Yeah, yeah. And it's weird. And especially being a guy that's experienced a lot in the past few years. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's cool to have these different perspectives. Um, and I feel like I can match perspectives in a way, even though we haven't gone through similar contexts. Yeah, 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 one hundred percent. But we <laughs> fucking yeah. struggle in a weird yeah. life. I'm sure, you're like being a drug addict, being in prison, and being out of prison, you felt the same in the meat suit. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. But the emotions were different, right? Yeah, it was a lot of transitions of like just dealing with humans and period, just thinking yeah. like just a lot of different. Don't know why I love you. Don't know why I fuck with you. Type shit. Or, you know, like, I don't know, yeah, I definitely understand, like, emotional off-balance, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, the chemical endorphins in your brain just not firing correctly, or, like, an over emotional overload that, that will just shut your brain down, or you just can't even process your thoughts no more, you know what I'm saying? And, and you're, you're in this can't suit. Can't even talk, you know what I'm and saying? And you're like, like fuck. Yeah. Ah, overload. Yeah. It's like yeah. the car overheating, and doing yeah. shit, pull over, it's done, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, yeah. Absolutely. And then, I would be, there was a point I would become dangerous when that type of shit would happen, like, but I've learned to, like... I, uh, to catch the, like the body effects like my heart will slow down and I'll get heat flashes in my eyes and like mm. all these things will start to happen that'll start to trigger this emo the emotional feelings that'll bring about the anger when I start to feel them I just alleviate myself out of the situation and that person is never even allowed to come out the light because I feel these triggers and these mechanisms that are going on like my heart rate mm. starts to slow down and beat and then I get heat in my face and they're like I'm like alright I need to take myself out of this conversation and I tell people all the time like yo I might be taking you wrong, but I'm just this this ain't working right now. I'm gonna take along and talk to you later. You know what I'm saying? Like no, nah, no, nah, like you know, just say what's up. Just because I might sometimes I know it's like I'll take what they're saying and I'll get an emotional feel off of it. Now what right. they, the reason what they said might not be meant at all to give me that emotional feeling. But the mindset that I'm in and the place that I'm in at that moment and the way my brain partakes it, I fucking think, What the fuck you do? you know what I'm saying? And it's like, oh man, you have to hold on a minute. I said take a second to think because you know, you might not be trying to disrespect me. You have to like, you know what I'm saying, to let that shit process. Yeah. Then like, so I'll alleviate myself out of the situation and like, you know, or, and then I'll process it and, and then I'll go back to it. You know what I'm saying? Instead of just letting those emotions take over, letting my brain get to the point of being upset that I cannot process this information anymore. And then what I'm saying and what I'm doing is pointless. And I learned really fast that you can't take back words, even if you don't mean them. Like a lot of people like to like play around with the "I'm sorry" word and type of shit like that. But you can't take that type. There's some things you can't take back. Can't, you can't take let the you, feeling back. Yeah, yeah. 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 That, that's always gonna be in their mind. You can tell them you're sorry all the time, but it's going to be there. So I try to like, you know, that taught. I learned a lot of life lessons. You know what I'm saying? Throughout yeah. like letting anger control me or like this just mindset. This I didn't have a father, so I always thought like. So I come up with this like, how do you be a man? You stand on all ten. You don't back down. You don't do this all the time. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking like, I'm missing a lot of the like real qualities of a man through trying to figure out what becoming a man means because I need to be a man, but I don't understand this shit because I'm around women all the time. You know what I'm saying? And I don't. So like, I would, 
I thought that it was. It took a while, like to come into man, coming to the game, and be, be and to learn more qualities of a man, and more so like being a provider, being a man of your word, sticking to you know what I'm saying what you believe in and stuff like that. Learn like the real qualities of be, being a man as I became a man. But right. as a younger youth, and I was trying to think, how the fuck do I be a man or strong? Yeah, strong. yeah, all these things and, and that yeah. with being in the lifestyle that I was was like in, and then the like persistency of the animal mindset. I know it's like, you know what I'm saying? That it created this person that, that I, I'm not now and it didn't need to be, but it needed, it was a survival mechanism. Like if I would feel pain, I would immediately trigger with anger. I wouldn't get tears no more. I would get, I would like, you know, I would want to go, you know, I want to fight or whatever, insecure, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah, so I would yeah. block it with the anger or yeah. whatever would happen, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. And it would, and it the would immediately, would come from yeah, anger. and it like even got so bad that like, if I'm trying to block out the anger, my heart will slow down and it'll like beat and it'll hurt, boom, boom, and it'll like, the suppression of my body starting to feel pain from this. But if I snap, it starts to speed up and I feel amazing. If it, as if I've taken a drug, like drugs, or like this uh, adrenaline uh, overload. So it's like fucking, fuck. like the suppression of the anger and trying to hold it back. But I learned like, do you not, you don't, you don't let people affect you like this. Like you don't, I shouldn't let that happen. So that's why I love to alleviate myself. Because I was calling myself, I put price. You know, so much. Yeah, yeah, you know what so I'm saying? Much. But these are all um, mechanisms that I had built throughout life and just living life on life's terms and just trying to figure it out that I had to open my mind and accept and learn how to evaluate and move past because I needed to evolve as a person and become like a better, like to, to, to succeed. So I had to like, you know, I'm, I'm just blessed to be able to do that. Cause some people's brain just, just can't do this. You know what I'm saying? Or when you just see them like, or for they just don't care for whatever reason, I'm just constantly trying to make myself a better person. So I'm constantly thinking, where can you, you know, better at? What can you do with, like, you know? And I learned from mistakes, you know. So I've, I've lost friends through mistakes. A lot of things I'll never do again, you know. What I'm saying because I value that person and that, you know, I'll never get them back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's a mistake that I made, and I should have never made it. But like, at least I was able to learn from that. I'll never do another friend like that type shit. You know what I'm saying? No, I totally feel that way, man. Because like, I've gone through a number of ups and downs. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, and that's that's a. Uh, that's what makes me relatable as a as a dude. To as people. a human, you know what I'm saying. Want to hear yeah. some shit from you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I'm not perfect, and I know that. <laughs> you yeah. know, uh, but this is this is my journey. This is my story, and when you follow along somebody's journey, it kind of gives you hope that like maybe we all don't have to make a perfect journey. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's, 100%. it's not. It's not got to be perfect. It's not got to be, you know, processed. It's just something that works. Yeah, you know. And uh, even though sometimes it doesn't feel like it works, when you look at, you know, zoom out and look at the grand scheme of things. Yeah, just because you're not getting results immediately, you just gotta give it time, you know what I'm saying? You know, um, Jaden and uh, and my, my nephew Christian both had me tattoo slow grind on them with a turtle. <laughs> and uh, you know, it's it's about that slow grind sometimes. Yeah, it is. You know, like, uh, Small gains turn into big ones, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's a marathon. Yeah, it's pretty, yeah. As long you as you're know, working, you're progressing. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's good. Uh, yeah, man. yeah, for real, dude. Yo, so fucking um, I actually uh want to bring Brad in as nice. a bonus fucking okay. guest, right? Hell yeah, like, let's go. Because uh, what up, Brad? Brad's been at the fucking house too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fucking um, uh, I'm just stoked to have both y'all here. What's uh, up? What's up? So, who are you? Man, what's up, guys? I'm Brad. Uh, wasn't planning on doing this, so this is kind of a little. I know, unexpected. I just jumped up on him like out of nowhere. But and uh, I know he loves making things perfect, so I just fucked right. him up. Right? No, it's all good, all good, <laughs> all good, man. So, uh, so really, I'm me, man. I'm a father. I'm a son, a brother, a friend. You know, uh, from originally from uh, Winchester, Virginia. Grew up in Harrisonburg, Virginia. Currently live in Waynesboro. Uh, I've been in the automotive industry for a long, long time into a couple other uh, little business ventures as well. Uh, but automotive has definitely been my thing. I actually just hopped out of it recently uh, due to a little uh, unfortunate situation. Uh, we'll be back eventually soon. Um, but man, right now I, I'm just enjoying my time, really, really realizing the value of my time and uh, and uh, looking at other other opportunities and, and, uh, and, and avenues that I could possibly create for myself. Like. I love the fact that you just said, like, the value of your time, like, learning the value of your I time. I lost it, man. I put something on Oof. Facebook earlier this week. Actually, it's so easy to lose the value of your time, man. My Oof. whole life, I've sold cars really since I was 13 years old. I was the youngest ever in Virginia. They changed the law because of me. My dad had a little small car dealership. 
uh, and I started out selling cars for him. Uh, so I was the youngest ever, but I've worked ever since I was a child and I was also wild. So I got put in night school when I was 15 or 16. So I was still working. I was bad. I actually got put in night school because I pulled a gun on somebody outside of the school, man. I never got in trouble for that. I think the statute of limitations is over, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I did. No, seriously. At a young age, man, I was wild. Very wild. I, I pulled the knife on a kid at church camp one time. So I, I started selling cars and I we all made mistakes. the first one to have a little money at a young age. So, and then we were, you know, smoking weed or whatever. So then I was the weed man. And uh, and I uh, end up pulling a gun on a dude in school. I'll, I'll try to fight him. Actually, truth be told, Zach Morris, if you ever see this, I tried to fight you in school. When the teacher grabbed me, you started talking shit. When the teacher grabbed me, you started talking shit. Then I was gonna fight you outside of the school, but then you brought your whole uh, van load of bo uh, of dudes with you. So, uh, anyways, but, <laughs> <laughs> not to pull up too many any bad memories. No, keep me upon you, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I hope you're good, dude. But uh, I hope you're good, man. But. Uh, Anyways, long story short, so I've been in business, man. I've worked since I was a young age, and uh, man, I've worked 60, 70, 80 hours a week, uh, and, and that's tough too, especially being a single parent, man, being uh, uh, not a single parent, but going through like relationship issues. Well, you know, but, uh, uh, separate parenting. Yeah, yeah no, nah, even yeah. when we was together, though, when you work oh, 70 really? hours a week, and you go home, and it's yeah. drama as soon as you walk in the door, and then you like, like get argued till one o'clock in the morning, and then got to be up at seven o'clock to go to work again. Man, it's stressful, but yeah, uh, yeah. That, fortunately... And then you have to take care of the child yeah, and make yeah. sure everybody's okay, and that's a yeah, hard ride. Yeah, it's a hard yeah. ride. Fortunately, I'm in a good place right now, uh, 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 not working, have a little bit of time to myself, man, which I feel like I've earned and deserved, man, so I'm going to yeah. make the most of that, self-reflecting, yeah, looking at, uh, again, different opportunities and whatever, but uh, enjoying that time, man. My son is in a good place. Shout out to my son, Keon, Yo. aka Little Lit, Keon G. Lit. Bro, little lit. This dude fucking FaceTimed his son the other night. Nine or ten? Nine. 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 All right. So he FaceTimes his nine year old, and he's like, "Yo, drop some bars." My man, he does this guy. He's like, on command. Yeah. And on then command. drops it. And dude, yeah. on command. Dude, no, no beat, no nothing. Oh my god. Uh, and that just like opened me up to understanding like what really is out in this world like yeah. there's there, so much there's like social media pages like humans Thanks. are amazing yeah. right yes. and like they're just people doing crazy shit your son should be on humans are amazing because like dude the, yeah. the guy just fucking dropped it dude. Yeah. Like, working real well yeah. Ooh, man i love it I so love it. uh that hopefully is my ticket out key the g little lit i hope he is <laughs> if not y'all probably can get a good deal on the car from me uh <laughs> Or you got to go find me or something, you know? Whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, look out for Little Lit. Y'all going to see the video soon. He's, <laughs> he's getting ready. He's real close to putting out his first uh, first major uh, music video. So, but, uh, hold on, hold on. What is your rap name? Man, I don't have it. I'll tell you the only rap name I've ever had. So I started rapping when I was young, 14, 15 years old. The only rap name I ever had was Lee Malvo, which I don't know if y'all know. But the DC sniper was Lee Malvo and John Muhammad. Oh, they called me the Young shit. Gunner. Lee Malvo was the kid. So and a dude yeah. nicknamed me that. A dude nicknamed me that. He said, "Yo, you the Young Gunner, so you, Lee wait, Malvo." Wait, so so you spit hot fire, but you don't even got a rap. Yo, I'm yeah. trying to tell him I want to put I'm it down. I'm working. Bro, 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 jump in. Say it. Say it. Say it. Don't work. Give me my look. Yo, nah. So so JTL Jado, my son Jaden, fucking. Uh, he what, what would mix the track right? Yeah, yeah. Fucking, he mixed well, he the track. The hook and then oh yeah, he, he created so yeah. so he created the hook. Uh, fucking verse for Hessem, verse for Brad. You know, they fucking murdered. Uh, they they put it together in like a day and a half. Um, and this dude fucking like I already knew Hessem had flow right. I knew he knew, I knew he had fire. But fucking Brad come out and fucking made it dumb. That's all I like to Bro, do. Is made it dumb. <laughs> and then sat there in the church. I'm not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> bro always oh, does this shit every time bro and I think that's kind of why I jumped you in here like wh when I went to the bathroom I was already thinking about telling you that we was gonna jump you in as a bonus guest Which cause like mean? dude you are a bonus guest in my life right yeah, so like Essam comes down yeah, he's like yo I'm bringing my fucking partner down cool but like dude you're a real one and like, like meeting real I'm motherfuckers dude. An opportunity. I really same am. dude you know yeah, yeah. meeting Definitely. real motherfuckers you know we, we do different things. We're, come, we're from different backgrounds, different states, but, like, the mindset all comes together and everybody feels yeah. like one. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. Like, 
I love meeting people like yeah. that. Real recognize real. Yeah. At, dude, I'm gonna name Shut the fuck <laughs> up! Bro, I was planning on naming this episode Yo, Real, real Recognize real. real, bro, and you just fucking yeah. said it! Yo, Shit! That's, a fact. that's but a dude, fact, Jack. And and it's really what it is, dude. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. Uh, you know, you came down for a guest spot and yeah. you didn't even tattoo. <laughs> Man, I feel like we spent the time way more valuable. <laughs> way more valuable. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, yeah. like, I, full disclosure, when Donna took me to go get PC the other night, I put a fucking song on the goddamn radio in the slingshot because they rented slingshots and they let us yeah. drive them around, yes. right? So I put this fucking song in the radio and Donna dedicated this song to me a while ago and I'm sitting there holding her hand crying in the fucking slingshot at night. Yes. Like, how could somebody love me this much? Yes. And like I'm riding in a slingshot, I love the feeling of being on a boat and also being on a motorcycle. Yeah. But motorcycles free. scare me. Yeah. yeah, the free feeling. So the slingshot gave me like yeah. the comfort, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm in this I'm in this comfortable place with the wind blowing around me. I, we just picked up my fucking '59 Caddy. Yeah. I'm like yeah. reflecting on life and how just like nice it all is. Yeah, and like how somebody could love me this fucking much, and it all just like hit me in this wave. Nice. And I was like, what the fuck? And like, if y'all had not come down and we had not read these slingshots together, I might not have yeah. had these motions, yeah. you know, pop up in this weird, like, bamboozle where I wasn't expecting them so they could come. Yeah. And I was like, quiet and private. I didn't even tell her about this yet. Well, but it's, good <laughs> that you, it's good that you can catch the energy and process yeah. it. You know, right. too, you know what I'm saying? A lot of yeah. people, like, yeah. it catches in bottles. In bottles. Yeah, in bottles. man. And I think I've done that for so many years. And I think as life has gotten different, um, you know, longer. Yeah. You feel different. You yeah. go through different things. The older I get, the smaller I get, the more I'm aware of, like, how, it's like you said, time, valuable, everything. I said, I feel like I'm out of time. I'm like eight years behind, so I overgrind. You know what I mean? Right. We, we lost some time. Yeah. We lost some time, I, I so felt, we got we to make that back. Yeah. I felt the same way when I went on Ink Master. Um, I have been tattooing for 15 years in the same spot. And I love my family, but my, my parents weren't very much open to exploring growth. Mm-hmm. as a business yeah. yeah. so I was dying to do it but for yeah. 15 years I didn't so finally I get to go on Ink Master and I got fucking like skyrocketing that and that was like the thing I was like I need to go forward because I've been I feel like I've been fe- held yeah. back but yeah. slingshot yeah yeah it was you know? good damn <laughs> yeah. didn't realize shit should have done this 10 years back right yeah, I'm right yeah. Yeah. so Brad yeah. thanks for jumping in yo, on me. thank yo, you yeah. I'm getting off your bed y'all get a chance like to this. see me more yep Bradley P aka Bradley Badass Bradley the Boss something we gonna figure it out <laughs> <laughs> alright so he's getting it he's getting it. now he's thinking about the name yo seriously so when, when y'all release this song I'm excited for everybody to like hear about it a little bit before nice. cause dude like I said like I knew you were you, I knew you were fucking nasty with it and then, and dude, no, seriously. And then Jaden come in, you know, Jado with with the fucking hook, yeah, because he came in right at the beginning. Naturally, too, bro. He created that shit so quick. And you know, it was cool. So a little backstory. So I was on a coaching call, getting coached when they came to 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 the house because I fucked up my time. Told them to show up like thirty minutes an hour early. So I quit my coaching call right quick, right out, and I'm like, yo, good to see y'all. This is my son, Jaden. He's holding my other son, Zen. Yeah. And I'm like, so um, I'll see you guys in about 30 minutes. Yeah, <laughs> and, like, the coolest thing was, like, I already told Jaden about you, and I knew that you guys were going to get along because I know yeah, your energy. I'm going to be speaking about him when I talk to him. Yeah. yeah. So, like, I knew you guys were going to get along and, and, and all that. But, like, I was in here, like, doing my shit, working through my stuff with one of my coaches, and, like, the coolest thing was I heard you guys out there genuinely connecting. Yeah, yeah hell yeah. He's just a good person. Yeah, yeah, yeah dude. Yeah, yeah. And then I heard Donna, and she was genuinely connecting. And, everybody, and I was like, fuck, this is so good. Yeah. And, like, this was on happenstance yeah. Yeah, yeah, from yeah, a convention. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm 100%. saying? And, like, the, I think I was on cardio or something, and I was like, I'm going to hit up Hessam and see if he wants to come guest. Yep. Like, and, yeah, and like, I got it. And, and like, and, and it's just like weird how life just kind of brings you in these weird directions. Right? Yeah, 100%. So, like, it, it's cool. It's cool that y'all came and, 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 like, blessed me with a different perspective. Yeah, nice. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. help me realize, like, dude, like I said, I, I was, I was driving a slingshot to go pick up my 59 caddy from the shop. 
you know, and then driving the caddy back to the house, yeah. and then Donna's driving me around in the slingshot, and it's like, who? I I really can't be mad at my life right now. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like big direction, it's a blessing. And and it was it was like these two these two simple moments that made me realize the whole perspective of it. And like you said, it, the time was spent better. Yeah, yeah. Better. That's why I told my old lady, I was like, Yeah, it sucks I didn't get to tattoo, but I got to hang out with dude and, and got to enjoy myself. Good relationship. So it was like kinda of like God sent me here for a different reason. Like I came like motivated to go tattoo. I already had tattoos lined up. I was gonna you know what I'm saying? Then it worked changed. out the other way, so then we got some time to hang out and like you know, you never know where other goes. So it's just yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's wild, yeah, man. It's, funny it's how wild. That and yeah. the health department, they give me like a four day drag. I'm still trying to shuck and job, boy. Like, <laughs> they, they just one roadblock and they like wait 24 hours for this. Which I get it, they got their hurdles and all this other stuff. Right. But like, I would, if they, if I would have been able to get it done like that, just with a phone call, I still would have been the time. So it's like, like, that's why I say I don't know. I believe in like everything happens for a reason type shit. Absolutely. You know, like God, the universe, uh, source, yeah. whatever the fuck you call yeah, it. It gives right? you chances. If you take them, you do. If you don't, you don't. You know what I'm saying? And we've been like, talking like, about that a lot. Opportunity presents itself yeah. repetitively, but then like Absolutely. a lot of people just don't capitalize on it or don't believe right. in themselves, don't take the push or right. just don't even take the time to use. Like I, like I said, I tell people all the time, it's no disrespect at all. I'm so fucking busy. I'll never get the chance to hang out with you to even see what kind of person you are, bro. And it's not even that I don't want to. It's just that I got family. I got children. I have a, I have a business that depends on my time. Too many I have to market and figure that me. off. And it's like, I want to hang out. I want to go to bars. I want to chill. But I can't. You know what I'm saying? Bro, Life won't allow. We was at brunch for fucking 30 minutes. Yeah. Fucking sitting there trying to fucking develop this fucking content. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I mean, that's a constant thing. Uh, I mean, it takes to be successful. It's like we're, we're constantly working. Constantly. So it's like, I, I would love to have like a million friends and everything like that, but I never. So it's like, it's hard to even get the time just to chill with somebody, bro. Like, you right. know what I'm saying? So it's, it's yeah. weird how like everything played out, just even present itself to like naturally just catch the time to organically chill. Got to work out with you. That was dope. And Dude, you know that was what I'm sick. Saying? Y'all be killing that shit. Animal, bro. Yo, thank you. I mean, I was on the car, over, over an hour and a half. My little legs had to quit. I had to get above that. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. It was good. Well, dude, Jaden fucking runs like five miles an hour on Shoot. fucking cardio. Hey, so man. I'm like, I'm trying to get four miles. You know, like I get four miles and I'm like trying to catch up to him. But yeah, like, I mean. That's one thing I said to myself. I wanted to be, you know, one legged monster. Yeah, you know and saying? you are, bro. You're from Thanks, man. Like I said, it, man. like if you don't look down, you never know. <laughs> you, know what I'm you never know. Facts. Facts. The way the moves, like, yeah, you you not let that hold him back. Period. <laughs> the baby was crying. Soup to the baby faster. Than somebody with both legs. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I ain't proud. Like damn. And man, my toe is broken. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. That's great. Yeah, man, you know, like... You know you putting some wear and tear on that mug. Like, <laughs> bro. So, so hanging off, still good. Dude, good. last month I did 100 push-ups every single fucking day, and I think... And the weight from the I just... Think I, I think yeah, I did yeah, that. So I just sense. ordered a new foot. Nice, you know, nice. They send it to me. Nice. Yeah, so like... It, it, <laughs> you got your push-up foot. foot. Yeah, <laughs> push-up foot. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, like, you know, this foot's covered in paint from when I painted the baby's room, okay. and there's a folding chair in there. Uh, that's covered in paint because I muraled the whole baby's room out. Nice, that's um, right. So, like, I cried a couple times. I cried a lot. Oh, but I cried a couple times looking at the chair, um, thinking, because it's, like, covered in fucking paint and, like, just feeling like, like, the naming this art piece, like, a father's love and, like, the story that's attached to that shit. Yeah, thanks. You know, yeah, from it's all got the way paint. more meaning in it than just the painting. Right, yeah, yeah because, like, it, 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 was, it was me loving my son to, to paint his whole entire room with murals and, like, I've been, man, so, some of my most floating on clouds, drug-induced moments uh, are when I'm painting, you know? like oh, Yeah, I can believe that when I was saying Without even being on drugs. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're just like That's there. natural high, like, you know what I'm saying? Natural, yeah, I understand Dude, that completely. Some people may not, but I do. Like, one of my so favorite like, things. The ability to block out everything. Dude, turn on some fucking dubstep and fucking paint a giant mural and just dance yeah. and paint. Yeah, and just block out reality. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Block out reality. You know, I think about nothing but what your mind is doing in that moment. That's why I like tattooing so much because I step into the tattoo that. and I'm gone. Five yeah. hours later, whatever I was stressing about before that is irrelevant. None of it matters. I was in that world and realm. Like, you know, I'm gone. Bro, like, like it's, it's nice. my client yesterday, like, when y'all was in there, I was like planning this thing out. By the time we was done, we had like the whole fucking yeah. outer quarter sleeve finished. You know what I'm saying? So Easy like, money. Just you know, just beating, beating the the 
the clock by falling into the matrix yeah. you know what I'm yeah. saying like this you weird the zone bro yeah, yeah like flow state is what yeah. you know uh, spiritual people call it you know you okay. fall, fall into the flow state and it's when you're like yeah. you know everything's perfect yeah. yeah you don't you don't have to think about breathing but you breathe perfectly yeah yeah you don't have to think about moving but you move perfectly it's funny I have to think about breathing in the fuck you're breathing up. Like you're breathing naturally and as soon as you start thinking about it, like you can also like, think yeah, about like it you don't over. think about it. Yeah, yeah. Right, it's crazy. Right. It's like what's your yeah. mind into? And then like and then if you get into the concentrated filthy yeah. Yeah. And now, now you've done it so long, that's repetition and you have uh, to live yeah, on it. And you're staying with it. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. And, and it's like it's so weird how like um you know, Tony Robbins talks about like uh, you know, getting into your like power pose. And like changing your physiology, nice. And like you can change yeah. your physiology depending on how you breathe. You know, depending on how you suppress the breathing, depending on how you stand. You know, one of the things I do when like uh, I'm scared, but I know I need to be brave, I'll just be like, <clears throat> like right. yes, Let yes, because yeah, yeah. at the Tony Robbins conference, he had me beating my chest and screaming yes so many times. Oh hell yeah! Do you, do you move? Do you move? And my move was screaming yes and punching myself in the yeah. fucking chest and that like that puts me in a level of kill yeah okay but it doesn't go. have to be negative kill yeah no nah, it's pumping you up just like, kill you know what whatever you're about to do yeah. you're about to ham out you're about to kill yeah, yeah. hamburger yeah. and mayonnaise yeah. bro go. like let's yeah. do it yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so like it's weird how like you literally can change your physiology based on how you how you think how you act self projection you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, you think positive, you're going to get it out. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can think something into existence. I'm a firm believer about that. You You've know what done I'm it. Like, yeah, self manifestation. We've done, it. We've done, done it. it. Yeah, multiple times. You know what I'm saying? Every I, time we I'm fail, we do it again. Bigger. Like, yeah, and add it. You know what I'm yes. saying? You know, like, like, we was, like, I was speaking to him, and he was saying earlier, like, in the last six, seven years, I haven't, like, my Damn. success rate has been great. Bro. A just thousand. From, like, yo, know, repetition thousand. and just, like, just the hunger to fucking, like, to get it, I guess, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, I don't know. I'm living proof that you can do anything every day and become good at it. And like, oh, oh, it, oh, like, oh, oh, it, yeah, dude, it that's food, it, bro, bro. that's I it. I didn't know. accept no for an answer. I took it and went ahead and did it. And like, and the, yeah, and the moment I realized that this is possible, there was no stopping me, bro. Like, no stopping no. me. It's Donna like, said that. She's like, you know why you like Hassam so much? She's like, because he's a fucking killer. She's like, you value people that don't quit. Yeah, one hundred percent smart. Yeah, she's you know good. Know she's very woke, and y'all, y'all both have a, y'all's chemistry together. It's like even like it helped it helped me see a perspective that I'm missing in my life. Like, like I swear to God, bro. Like, and that, that's no lie. Like, I even I even told him I was like, I, my woman, I need to allow her to do more. Like, there's like a, I can have her doing way more. Like, so there's a lot of things to like just because I'd be hyper focused on what I'm doing, and I just, she'd be focused on being a mom. But she like a lot of the separations that we have is through her and me having success and me being hyper driven in this realm that she has no understanding of. And the realm has at times brought out bad, bad mm. like stuff in me to where so she lives in a constant state of paranoia just through the fact that I've heard her before and everything. But she's actually really one of my best assets because she's intelligent half the time when she says something and actually does come true, whether I don't see the shit or not. We don't believe you know, that there's yeah. such a good but asset. Watching y'all and how y'all work together as a team as like open my mind like yo I have that same asset I just have not been capitalizing on it bro like she's my like I you know what I'm saying but it's just like crazy that like watching y'all two work as a unit with it like was like I got my version you know what I'm saying you got your yeah Yeah, yeah. I I told her that the other day on the phone I was like yo I really do think it's time that you you know what I'm saying like I mean, I'm crazy that I didn't realize this by now but all the way down to the point if I died tomorrow you didn't know how to run my empire but you know what I'm saying? You know nothing of what's going on. What if I die? You know what I'm saying? My son's like, they, they're, they're kids. They don't know. She's your queen. You got to treat her like, yeah, I got like, yeah, you. Yeah, you got to step into the role. Yeah, you know, so you got to learn how to step in the role with her. Yeah, 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 to, to understand yeah. it at least. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because she's the like controller of my kids. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Yeah, and, and you know, me and Donna have had that talk. You know, she's like, if if you die, you know, uh, what happens with the house? What happens with my share of the business? You know, what happens with the cars even, you yeah, know, yeah, like, yeah. am I going to have to fucking lose all this stuff and fight to get it back? So, you know, like, um, the fact that I can trust someone, yeah, man, it's hard for me. Yeah. 
I've been divorced twice on here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm divorced myself before. Right. Married, so, so I know. Yeah, yeah. You know, like I, I've 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 had um I've had a rough weird go. Uh, you know, my son is is re has reconnected with his bio mom and she's amazing now. Nice. Um, but you know that was a weird ride we went through without her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, my second wife, we had a really weird run, uh, and it didn't work. And you know, me and Jaden had a hard time through that. And so now, I'm so scarred from all these past relationships that I'm afraid of Donna's true power and love. So to hear that you say our relationship breeds some hope in a different direction, you know, or something that you're missing, like, thanks, man. Because yeah, well, I feel it. like I'm... I feel like I'm not doing good enough. Nah, nah, y'all's you know chemistry what I'm is great, bro. Like, I, I see, like, all the way down to, like, so you're having a conversation in the boom, and then she whips out, and she, like, understands your schedule. Like, I'm just, I don't know how to see it. Like, and sometimes, like, a key opens up, like, no, I know my, my, and sometimes, like, she just, she, she probably doesn't want to be a part of it, because, like, I, like, sometimes it's hard to put yourself in somebody else's mindset and let them, like, see what's going on, because of all the negativity that came behind it, but, like, it's actually the push that's probably needed for more to be more successful and for her to be, to understand really where my mindset's at, to not have to always guess, you know what I'm saying, yeah. to really understand, and then, like, to, I don't know, just to watch the chemistry just really open my eyes, it's kind of weird, it's like, uh, like okay, like that's I like the you know what I'm saying that's my missing key right there. You that know means what I'm that means a lot, man. That means a whole lot because one of my biggest goals um, lately in my life has been to be a better spouse. Yeah, nice. Um, I know the happy wife, happy life, and that's right, the truth, bro. You know, and like and you know, go deeper than that. A real, true union and happy, loving connection means that you have a better life in general. Yeah, 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 all the that, way around. That deep connection where yeah. where she feels heard, loved, respected, and appreciated, and so do you. Yeah, and it's a positive energy always. You know yeah. what I'm saying? There's never no negative aura. And that positivity feeds off into other people. Just like me chilling and catching the positivity, right. seeing y'all, and opening my mind to like, damn, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, the self-reflection of this, this is something I should have thought a long time ago. It's crazy that... My mind's proceeding it now on a lot no level, like as like right. I've always known that I could definitely use her in multiple ways and then my mindset's been like, but I don't have to pay a babysitter to have her doing this and this and this when the babies are young, especially when they're at the age where they can't tell you somebody's done something wrong to them. So they're like right. really just don't want just anybody watching our children, you know what I'm saying? But through so she's always been like that supportive person that supports me, but at the same time, I'm just coming a superstar. I'm out here like I'm, you know, I'm, I'm achieving in major ways, but don't nobody really know what I've got. So they don't know her. Like it's, she's just like she's the reason. Like if I didn't have her babysitting and helping with the children, I'd have all these other things and all this other stuff like that. Yeah. And at the same time, I just lost sight of, of some things. I guess you know what I'm saying. And then seeing it from because I'm in my own shop all the time, running my own business, and I really see other. Uh, successful people other than my business partner and a couple right. people that are around me you know what I'm saying right. so like I don't know it's just nice to see like a different and then and, and I don't know for some reason my brain was just like whoa it's like the epiphany moment like damn this is some that shit been done did already it's not only A causes uh, solves a lot of problems but B makes success more and everything smoother all the way down to her understanding, like if something, what happened if I die tomorrow or something like, you know what I'm saying? Like right. nobody knows what they're doing, you know what I'm saying? Like opening so communication. Yeah, yeah. Like, if yeah. I die, I got her and him. That's it. Like my yeah. mom, I love her to death, but she she would just run shit. She would kill everything. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like yeah. so, it's like I don't know. It's just a self. It was just like the, it's like epiphany moment. Like damn, I should have should have already did that. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, yeah. I love that because I've had a lot of those moments with you talking about you know your studio. Um, I've lost a lot of artists recently uh, to different reasons. Yeah, some facts. that some that feel you know okay and don't hurt. Some that hurt. Yeah, facts. You know, and uh, yeah, that's yeah. what happens as a business owner. Right? Yeah, yeah. And you've talked to me a lot about that lately. You know, and then seeing that your studio is so successful with so many artists, yeah, I was like, so oh good. shit, yeah. man! Like, and you know, I know nothing's perfect on your end, right? Yeah. And well, that's one of the things: nothing's perfect on our end. And when you were saying this stuff about me and Donna, she was like, dude, nothing's perfect, you know, and like, I'm glad that you, that you see something good, and I see something good, but, and then there's that other side, if you're watching, 
Nothing's perfect. Yeah, never. never. If it is, like, <laughs> something's wrong. If it's it is, something's big. wrong. Look at yeah. yourself. Yeah. Something's yeah. wrong. Nothing's Somebody's perfect. Somebody being fake. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Nothing's yeah. perfect. Uh, we could find things that are in alignment that yeah. um, uh, provide the least amount of friction, but there's probably still some yeah. friction. Yeah. Uh, I've never found a perfect situation, and I've always been in pursuit of one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Always yeah, something goes wrong. You can plan. The more you plan, this is like the more accidents happen. Because Dude. the more you plan for it, the more chance there is for something Bro. in the plan to go wrong. So like it, like it really we set ourselves up for failure a lot of the time. Dude. So we're like over micromanaging shit. Uh, and like you know, it's crazy. You know, and we can just get smoothly and just ride. Absolutely, and it's funny. Um, somebody told me she was like, uh, uh, "Plans are God's way of having a, a sense of humor." And, you know, however you want to look at that, right? Uh, it doesn't have to be God. But in, in just in general, there's something out there that's governing and watching. Yeah, yeah. And us making plans is our way of making them laugh. Yeah, yeah. It makes sense. <laughs> because it makes sense. never do plans go on it. No, no. You, know, you never. always have to call audibles on a play. Oh. And, and, and that's, that's where becoming successful, I feel like, has the advantage. It's like, cause we can plan and do everything, but there's always gonna be these problems that hit themselves and everything, but then it's at that point on the, how do you maneuver on the field? When the, when the problems present themselves, how do we get past them? Like, and then that's where like, at, throughout life, we develop these, these, these like, these features that we go to yeah. automatically, and we like develop people that we can bounce ideas off of and like, you know, that we respect their opinion right. and, we, and, right. and as a, on our journey, depending on who you are and what you've done, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's my, my business partner, the guy I bounce every, everything off of other than my woman. I'll bounce my questions off for her and try to get multiple perspectives before I right. make a major decision. Right. And those like safety networks I've built throughout just, cause, you know, consistency and trying to be, you know, solid with what I'm doing. But you don't have to follow those plans. Those are like contingencies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not like you know, well, every time, like yeah, like when yeah. when we had the shop, yeah, we had to move it and yeah, did it in yeah. a month. We had so many hurdles come out, but it was always. But just it all like, happened it was so intense. Yeah, in you one just month. have to maneuver. You yeah. just have to. All right, I can't hang on this right now. I just got to push it. It didn't work, and go on to the next thing and make it work. You know what I'm saying? I yeah, adapt and yeah. overcome, baby. You know what I mean? Yeah. You I just, was I was in a fucking a wheelie chair, fucking riding around my shop. Banging up fucking tiles, fucking still grinding, using the fucking floor sander, fucking jumping over the mural, painting on the floor like bro. Yeah. I, you know, I I totally understand that, and it, it all hurt, it all yeah. fucking sucked. Well, you know, it broke it my heart. Sure yeah. But you know, iron sharpens iron, right? Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. What but don't kill you, makes you stronger. Stronger, stronger. Your soul, your mind, your body. Yeah. And it's so amazing how like how much working out makes you feel amazing. But people, we don't want to do it. But like as soon as you get done, you feel amazing. It's like the 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 like the just I don't know everything mentally and everything. But totally but, but to get yourself through the door to do it can it's become a mental fun. argument. But it's like you need it. You know what I'm you saying? Like, you feel amazing you when it happens Absolutely. when you do it. But it's like we our brain working against us. Like you, know, Dude, like, oh, you don't have to do that today. Oh, this that whatever. It's like I remember when I started really changing my life. I remember I felt like I traded my um, drunken nights of ecstasy. You know, for my and my hungover mornings of feeling like shit, and I flip them around. I take my feeling like shit at the gym and make that the ecstasy, and then it fucking turns into a better feeling afterwards because you put the bad in front of the good. Makes sense. You know what I'm saying? And like when I felt that, don't get me wrong, I like drinking. I'm drinking now. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I'm not against it, but at the end of the day. Living to drink and work and be a dad is different than living to be a human and a parent and then work is a thing and dad is number one and husband is number two or one. Or the, they're all the same. Yeah. You know, and then sometimes you reward yourself with a couple of drinks. Yeah. You know, instead of like killing yourself to fucking drown out the bullshit. Yeah, yeah. But the biggest reward isn't the drinks. No. It's the feeling you get after the gym. Yeah. It's the feeling you get after meditation, after breath work, after reading, the balance. after being a good husband, after being a yeah. good father, after doing a great tattoo, after making a great business deal. Yeah. You know, like that feeling you get of just doing the work and getting that. The reward. The reward. The yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, and like balancing that reward with the lows and then the neutral times and feeling like, wow, I could really live this. Yeah. No, you know, 100%. and it's. It's a weird thing to find that I can really live this. 
You know, instead of, ah, 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 you know. If you can ride it, you're in there. Yeah, but finding that, finding that fucking air pocket, you know, to just really live this. I still go out of that air pocket, but I'm trying. We all you know do. Saying? Yeah. We all do. We always waiting to blow you. And do it. <laughs> and, 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 and then, and then the, the lack of wanting to try will, will drop you. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you're like, I can't do this anymore. And you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. That's harder. Okay, I'm going to come back. Yeah. yeah, it's harder to not try sometimes. Than it is to try. Yeah, well, I've learned to like, uh, if I did, I can make it work. Right. There, there's, a, there's a way, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I just have to sit down and I have to figure out why it's not, and I have to change. Like, it's like taking pieces of the puzzle away and sliding the right one in there right. until it snaps. Right. But it's like, you can't let the frustration of this isn't working stop you. You have to stop thinking with the profit. That used to be a big problem for me. And this it's isn't like, working. You know, you know what I'm yeah, yeah. Well, I would do drugs to block out, like, the emotions I was feeling or like, I know I just, my life sucked, couldn't pay my rent, was struggling to do all this. So I would just do drugs and would block out the feeling of the pain of all these like things I couldn't control and I was just be numb minded. So then I found myself just chasing this numb feeling so I didn't have to feel anything. But really, if I just learned how to accept life on life's terms and maneuver through it, I had the skills to, to make all this work, but it was just easier to turn to something that made it numb and made it didn't matter. You know what I'm saying? So totally it's like, understand. yeah, once I learned that this is actually the, the wrong way, you know, I'm all the way down there, it takes your money, all kinds of shit, it's just retarded. You know what I'm saying? Paying somebody else their Bentley to like you lose yours type shit. It does not make any yeah. sense. And then like, I don't know, I woke up and stopped. You know what I'm saying? But like, I remember still to this day, very vividly, all of the transitions and the different stages of it. And I think that's some of the powerful things that'll make sure that I never go never go back to it. Because I remember the phases and I remember what life was like through all the phases and I like I love what my life is today. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I love when I wake up, I love the person I am, you know what I'm saying? So that's that's in, in general just a blessing in itself, you know, to not feel confused and not know not know who I am or where I'm going. Like I feel like I have a good drive. I know where I'm going in life. I know how I'm going to get there. And I know what to do, you know what I'm saying, as opposed to like wondering the why. And I'm open for evolvement and trying to figure out the unknown and what I don't know through repetition and just, you know, being genuine and trying to do what I can yeah. do, you know what I'm saying? So, I, but I remember times in my life when I, you could ask me what I was going to be or what I was going to do and I had no clue, you know what I'm saying? Like I was living in the moment. I was trying to get high and chase a bride, whatever, it didn't matter. Like what, tomorrow yeah. don't fucking matter. Yeah. Definitely couldn't think of a month or a year. I definitely couldn't come up with a contingency plan yeah. for anything, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was thinking about that the other day, like, you know, if somebody would ask me, like, what my projected sales were for the year, I wouldn't have fucking been able to tell them for 20 years. Now I understand business a little more. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. okay, wow, everything could be projected. Yeah, through you repetition, know? now you right. understand. But before yeah. it was like, well, we can't project things, it's tattooing, now you actually can. Yeah, yeah, you can. You know, you and can look like, at what you did the year right, before, I guess, right. okay, this should go up to here, like, yeah, you definitely can. You know, everything can be projected, everything can be tracked, um... And you can pay attention to what you're doing yeah. and become the best version of you. Yeah, well, I would say you could get better than that. Yo, the real. moment you think you're the best, you're, you're handicapped. That means you think you need to yep. now learn nothing. And that means you're stuck at the position you are at in life. And if you don't have like 10 billion in the blank bank, you probably shouldn't be thinking like that. You know what I'm saying? Because even a million dollars, I could piss through a million dollars in two, three months. Piss yeah, through it. Really I mean, easy. that's just having a good time. If we take and throw like reality, like, yeah, that's nothing. It's really, it's, it really is. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all yeah. have already spent it and don't even realize it just yeah. because it was a little yeah, increment. Yeah. You know, like you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, it just to say it sounds like oh, like you it know, sounds but, weird, it's but not, not it's true. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? It really it's is. Amazing. I'm glad that I understand that. And I'm not like it's just like I need this. We need we need way more than that. You know what I'm saying? Like, right, and and that's the thing. You know, you're learning like who you are, what you need, and how to get to where you want to go. Facts, facts. And uh, a lot of people don't understand that. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I'm just yeah. glad to be driven. You know what I mean? Yo, like, that's real. Yeah, yeah. I'm with it. Yeah, so, uh, this is the Rad Movement. This is has some... Ace to the E. Rad, a.k.a. all them other things. Yo. Um... Thanks, fellas, for your time this week. Appreciate you having us. Thanks man. for your time today. Yeah, uh, thanks for being a good sport yeah. and jumping in like without not even yeah. knowing, not a yeah. damn yeah. name, not so a. He does best. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I seen you smile yeah. and watching it like <laughs> you're good because Brad did a fucking killer verse yeah. on the fucking track yeah, well, and was like, "No, I don't want. I want. I want to redo it. I want to redo it." So, like, I didn't even think Smoked like, it. man, just jumping off the cuff. Uh, but thanks for being so real, both of y'all. Yeah, well, um, you know, thank you guys for joining. Uh, and this is the point where you plug yourself. Who are you? What do you do? Um, tell them about your music. 
your tattoos, uh, the smoke box, you know, anything okay. you want to okay. plug up. I go by Hessum. It's H E S S O M. You can type it in on any platform. I'm going to pop up. That's what music. I got a YouTube channel. I'm a tattoo artist in Virginia. If you're ever in Virginia, look up Hessum Zinc. I got the meanest team in town. If I can't get to you personally, I got somebody that's going to bless you, but I'd love to do it too. So it doesn't matter. I love to make music. My father. Just go off that name, Hessel, man. You're going to see me a lot. Look it up if you want to keep up with me. I'm going to have tattooed him on his throat, the big H. Hey, and he killed that still smoke. Yeah, thank you, sir. Hey. He told me, he goes, you know, you may not believe me, but I'm going to be famous. And oh, I was like, sir. I believe you, bro. So yeah. uh, you heard it here. Yeah. Uh, you it's going to happen. Yeah. It's going to happen. Yay. Remember All that? All right. Well, dude, thank you so Appreciate much. You, um, fucking... Love having you guys on. Yeah, appreciate well, appreciate the honesty and the fun, openness. Bro. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, yeah. dude. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so you guys know what it is. I'm Robert Rapole. This is The Rad Movement on YouTube. Uh, go check out uh, The Rad Movement on Instagram. Uh, uh, opening enrollment for my coaching program Monday, which well, is t said. today when I'm dropping. Uh, I've done some early birds, so... Uh, we better go ahead and fill this up quick because uh, you better jump on because these people getting in. Um, <laughs> uh, we're doing some life-changing stuff. I'm really excited to do it. Uh, and uh, thank everybody for being here, 100%. Uh, yeah. We're rad and so are you. Thanks for joining, and uh, we'll see you next time. Take it easy. Yay. Yeah, yeah that's dope, bro. Yeah, for real.